Hey, mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I want to show you a specimen of one of my favorite uh, mushrooms that grows with beech trees. And this is a Neofavilus mushroom. Uh, their common name is the hexagonal polypore. So from the top, you have a fairly unremarkable looking mushroom that's just sort of, uh, you know, tough and plain, a little bit on the soft side, like a not really fuzzy, but, um, you know, sort of matte finish. But when you flip it over, unlike a lot of other polypores, which are just sort of uh, smooth with a porous surface, the uh, Neofavilus genus has these beautiful sort of diamond-shaped hexagonal pores. And so that's what makes them uh, really distinctive. As far as the specific species, this could be, uh, in my estimation, one of two things. Either Neofavilus ovularis, which is probably the most commonly known uh, Neofavilus mushroom in uh, North America, America, or a very recently uh, proposed, I don't know if it's an official species yet, uh, Neofavilus americanus. And the reason that I say Neofavilus americanus is an option here is that uh, Alvia laris is usually described and, uh, you know, that like the, um, the species type collections are often very orangey. And you almost have, uh, you know, instead of a little bit of softness here, it's almost like an orangey scurfiness on top of the mushroom and the fruiting bodies. Whereas um, Neofavilus americanus is described as being far more pale uh, and creamy in color. Now, I did hit a paywall before I could read more about americanus, and I'm also not a Neofavilus genius. So, uh, you know, this is basically, since this is an inedible mushroom that I would spend some time, you know, photographing, I'm not going to stress out too much about the taxonomy, but that's the best I can do for today. Uh, so, again, you know, sort of a, a, a tough fruiting body. It is not, uh, you know, edible, but it is really a, a you know, a gorgeous thing to uh, take pictures of. And, uh, and again, grows on beach. And so anytime I'm in a beach grove and I have these, you know, elephantine looking beautiful trees around me, I'm on the lookout uh, for uh, these mushrooms, which really love to, uh, particularly on, you know, medium sized or even very small twigs, you'll grow uh, these little Neofavilus dudes. Another thing I want to show you is, uh, an up close, if I can manage it, of the pores. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you can see that it's really a diamond shape, uh, but it is, you know, subtly, if you zoom in a lot, you know, you have some of them that are hexagonal. And again, hexagonal uh, polypore being the common name is a little bit deceptive just insofar as like they really look more diamond shaped. But at any rate, you know, it's very clearly, uh, you know, this really unusual wide um, apertures for where the spores come from. So uh, in conclusion, I think this is a really great example of a sort of cooler weather mushroom that might not normally get my attention as much, unfortunately, in the summertime. So I am very, uh, you know, uh, inattentive and childlike during, say, chanterelle season. So I'm just all over the place, looking at everything, flipping everything over. And I might not, uh, you know, stop and spend time examining or using a hand lens uh, to look at these, these beautiful porous surfaces. Now I'm getting greedy to see if I can do it multiple times for my iPhone. Uh, but I can, I'm, I'm gaining a skill here that I didn't know I had. So, uh, you know, being able to spend some time really looking at these smaller structures is really interesting. And then, uh, you know, just being able to be out in the woods and find something thing at all. Uh, you know, this is uh, mid-March and things are a little quiet. Morel season is coming up, but you know, in the meantime, Neofavilus and a lot of other polypores and, uh, you know, shelving fungi are my friends. I find them fascinating and I hope you do too.